In a recent research survey, 61% of people ages 18 to 25 reported miserable loneliness in our post-pandemic world and felt as if no one cared for them. No matter if you are single or married, experiencing isolation and loneliness can often lead to depression that can be crippling. People in the world are looking to belong. In Christ, as his followers, we have the answer. The church is a family and we should seek out those who are isolated because they may be truly suffering in their lives. We enlarge our hearts, we become vulnerable with each other by God's grace to enjoy meaningful and fruitful friendships that are soul quality and one sold knitly closely together with one another. Do, do you struggle with being vulnerable with other people? What, what's causing you to hold back from being transparent and open with someone? Perhaps you've been hurt in previous relationships. Maybe you've experienced rejection. Or betrayal. Maybe you were wounded in your soul and you're scared to become vulnerable with other people again. We have to trust that Christ will heal that hurt and will bring us into healthy Christian friendships for his glory. To be able to build intimate Christian friendships, we must also learn how to go beyond surface level conversations and move into heart to heart type of conversations. It's easy, you know, in our society to be self-isolated and guarded in the name of privacy. Sadly, consumerism in our culture has infiltrated uh, our relationships as well. If friendships don't enhance value in our life, we see them as disposable and easily replaceable or even ditch friendships altogether. As members of the body of Christ and brothers and sisters in the family of God, he has called us to be joined together. As Ephesians 4 tells us, rather speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way unto him who is the head into Christ from whom the whole body joined and held together by every joint with which it is equipped. When each part is working properly, makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. That's Ephesians 4, 15 and 16 in the ESV. To be able to speak the truth in love to one another we must cultivate trust in our friendships. True Christian friendships are rare and costly because they require a lot of work, self-commitment, and intentional engagement. Our self-centered heart or our past hurt can get in the way and can lead us to isolate and choose selfishness over investing in meaningful Christian friendships. But we have to press past these temptations that want to build up walls around our hearts or seek only things that satisfy, satisfy us. The foundation of good friendships must begin with Christ. It must start vertical, then move its way horizontal to be able to sustain loyal, sacrificial, intentional, caring, and committed relationships. We must also remember that friendship with the things of this world is to make one an enemy of God, according to James 4 and 4. And it will keep you from growing in the love of God, both your love for Christ and your love for others. What worldly pursuits have become a stumbling block to maybe your friendship with the Lord Jesus Christ? That maybe it's keeping you from getting to know him in a deeper way. Remember, the nearness of God is for our good, as referenced in Psalm 73, 28. The more we grow in our relationship with Christ, the more we will also grow in our other friendships as well. The Lord wants us to flourish in both areas, to flourish in him, which means we must become in, uh, very fluent in our friendship. Jesus is the ultimate friend and wants to have a friendship with us so that we can participate in his mission, mission, which is discipleship. And we're talking a whole lot about that right now, right here at Harvest Church. The consistent pattern in our life should be draw near to him, to then draw near to others and grow in Christ together for our good and for his glory. I'm Pastor Seth Wilkerson. Thank you for watching this week's Monday Man.